Very good. Hello and welcome back to the Way to Native Chronicles. Can a large caliber rifle make your teeth hurt? It may seem like sort of a strange question and probably a lot of people will associate that immediately with a lot of recoil that's just jarring you a lot. But this video is actually dealing with uh, something that's a little less obvious perhaps and uh, I'm suspecting maybe some shooters out there know exactly what I mean when I'm saying that a large caliber rifle with fairly significant power can make your teeth hurt. If you want to know what I mean, maybe this little clip will give you sort of an idea. Did you notice something happening in that video that's a little different from the way rifles usually recoil? Take a look at it again in slow motion. Now that you notice that, the rifle, which is actually this one right here, a Ruger number no. one chambered in 45 120. So that's a pretty significant amount of uh, uh, recoil and uh, heavy bullet that I'm shooting. But when I shot the gun, you'll notice that as the gun went off, it went like that. And it wasn't just a fluke, like every time this gun shoots on recoil, it's like that. Recoil like that. It twists left. Actually at first I thought, well that's just, just the way it is, you know, it's... But somebody pointed out to me, he says, you know why that is? That's because of the large diameter and the heavy bullet uh, that you're using. And uh, I, when I heard that I thought, you know, that makes a lot of sense. Because uh, when I was developing loads for this rifle, I was developing some really hot loads and uh, working with various different kinds of powder and seeing where, where my, my accuracy and comfort uh, range would be with this, with this rifle because this is a, a cartridge that they don't make uh, factory made ammunition for anymore. So I experimented around quite a bit and uh, some of those loads were pretty hot I'll tell you. And uh, when I would leave the shooting range afterwards I was kind of Man, you know, I, I could even feel it right after the shots that my teeth are sore. You know, it's like, it must just recoil so hard that it just shaken me up, I, I guess, you know. I kind of brought my loads down a little bit and I got to a comfortable shooting load that uh, really it's not a, an issue anymore. But still, uh, it was kind of kind of odd that my teeth would hurt. And, uh, but then this fellow mentioned, you know, that's because it's a large caliber bullet and a heavy bullet that you're shooting. Yeah, so that got me thinking. I've taken a little bit of physics and I decided to look into this a little bit and because I, I could see the point that's being made here. You have a, a, a bullet that's a large diameter and it's going to enter the bore of your rifle and the the rifling in, in the bore, on the case of this rifle, is a right hand twist. So it's going to twist that bullet going like this as it starts off out of the case, right? And what that does is uh, the rifle is trying to resist it and it'll cock the rifle the other way, like that. Now you might not notice that quite as much on a 30 caliber or a 7mm, something like that or 22 caliber, you know, because their, their diameter is quite a bit less. There's not, not as much leverage to twist that rifle. But when you get into a big caliber, now that thing starts off and it hits the rifle and it's going to twist the gun. So now we see that that, that bore is twisting the bullet to the right and 
The next thing is I want to show you what I mean with a few physics calculations if you don't mind. Okay, let's take a look at this first one. And I want you to look at this stuff because I put a lot of work into this, okay? Okay, you don't have to read it all. But if you want to pause the screen and check my calculations, by all means do so and let me know if you find any errors in it. First of all, I'm just going to show you this set of a summary of the formulas involved. The first one is angular velocity and uh, that's calculated by multiplying the rotations per second, the, the spin rate of your bullets, by uh, 2 pi. And that's where you get your angular velocity measured in radians per second. Then you take that spin rate or the in rotational inertia calculation and uh, you can calculate that by looking at the bullet's mass and the bullet's radius. And finally you can get the angular momentum by uh, multiplying that rotational inertia by the angular velocity. So that's why I did the uh, angular velocity and the rotational inertia. And you can see when you look at those equations there uh, that, that especially that rotational inertia you have one half mr squared uh, that radius uh, comes into big play it's because it's squared so it's an exponential function it really alters the output of the calculation so let's move on and let's just take a quick look at the uh, <clears throat> calculations for a sample bullet i'm going to take a look at seven millimeter bench rest remington this is a cast bullet that I use quite a bit and when I look using the uh, formulas that we just saw, uh, look at the spin rate then I come up with uh, uh, 2542.7 rotations per second from a 1960 foot per second bullet that's going through a, a barrel with a twist rate of nine and a quarter inches. <clears throat> so we take that, come up with an angular velocity then we go down to the rotational inertia and with that I use a, a 152.7 grains for the weight of that bullet and I multiply it by the uh, by squaring the radius of that little tiny diameter bullet and I come up with that figure of uh, uh, you know 1.42 I think it's by times 10 to the minus fifth or sixth uh, power it's a very small number but we'll refer to that later. And I can use that also to come up with the angular momentum. Okay, so you guys following along here? Yeah, I put a lot of work into this, okay? <laughs> okay, let's go take a quick look here at 45 caliber, 535 grain bullet that I'm shooting out of that Ruger number one. And uh, in the case of that one, it's a very slow twist rate. The bullet is going 1620 feet per second according to my uh, chronograph and the twist rate on the barrel is very slow which is great for a cast bullet it's a, a 22 inch uh, twist rate and uh, the angular velocity we see the uh, results for that and then we get down to the rotational inertia which is uh, 535 green times uh, the square of that large radius bullet and we wind up with that uh, figure of uh, let's see how many 1.18 times 1 2 3 times 10 to the minus fourth I think it is so we've used that and come up with the angular momentum as well and uh, now these are all just numbers so on this last page here where I just have some summaries I just want to show you what it really comes down to when we compare that seven millimeter uh, to the 45 uh, 120 and the angular momentum is three times more than this seven millimeter bullet and in the case of the rotational inertia we're looking at eight times more rotational inertia so that is I think you could say mathematical or physics proof that there is a huge amount of extra twist being applied to the bullet which and if you uh, recall your physics uh, high school classes every action has an equal and opposite reaction so that twist that's putting the amount of force that's 
being applied to the bullet to twist it going like that, it's uh, being reacted to by the, by the rifle twisting the opposite direction. So in the case of that 45 120 that we're using in this example, that uh, rifle is torquing to the left substantially. And uh, when we take a look at these videos, you're going to see, let's just take another quick look at it. You'll see in this video that that rifle torques right over to the left. When you shoot the uh, large caliber heavy bullet especially, you're going to get a left hand torque on your rifle. And it's uh, maybe going to be more pronounced on a rifle that has open sights like mine does. Uh, maybe a scope will uh, kind of give it a little more inertia on the top to stop it from twisting. And I know uh, people can say that, uh, well, you've got to hold the wrist of that stock a little tighter. And that's true, you can control it to some extent by holding the rifle tighter. But, you know, I'm uh, 65 now and this is the way I've been shooting all my life. So I'm going to hold the gun. I don't like to have a death grip on my rifle and I'm not going to alter that shooting style. So. Really, it's working just fine, uh, shooting it the way it is, but uh, it's something interesting to be aware of and maybe something that not many people have ever considered. So if you're shooting a large caliber rifle and you ever notice that kind of a uh, little bit of soreness against your jaw, this is the answer to why that's happening. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If if you did, please click like on it. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to this channel. It really helps to keep the content of this sort coming along, you know, so we have more resources to work on this sort of thing. Your subscriptions make a huge difference. So uh, from the Weight of Native Chronicles, until next time, God bless and take care. You got it, <laughs> again.